Keeping the faith's what we must do. Knowing that God will see us through. Lifting up cares to God above. Trusting wholly in the Savior's love. Greetings, friends and brethren. Paul Mays with you. I'm a Christian. All right, I got no business doing this, but I gotta. So, um, I received uh, comments on a video going back to, actually, uh, The Lord Only Built One Church, which is a hymn and a couple of teaching videos. Um, all denominations are an abomination. The Lord Only Built One Church. That's a potent truth that shocks people. Whoa! And I wrote it into a teaching hymn to generate Bible study, and it has done just that. Man, it's cranked out the Bible studies. So, on YouTube, a person has made some comments. I glanced, I saw a couple of things, and, and decided I'm just going to respond this way. And uh, I guess I should go look at the person's name. Uh, let's see. Come on now. Um, or not. No. Yes. Okay, well, it's Reesey. 1978. That's what I got so far. So that's all. I, that's the only name I have. So um, that's Reese is what I'll use. And uh, we're going to look at his comments, his or her comments, and um, compare them to the authority of Scripture. We're going to answer, give an answer, be prepared, always be ready to give an answer of the hope that is within you with meekness and fear. That's what we're going to try to do today. So, Reese, welcome to our Bible study. So, I've got the hymn that says, All denominations are an abomination. The Lord only built one church. That's not good. Still not good. Okay, we're just going to do that. Good enough. I got a bowl in front of it. Not good enough. Come on now. I should have whipped out a... We'll hope that stays. I should have whipped out a little tiny um, um, phone holder. I'm at a loss for the word. It's not a tripod. All right. Getting into it. Sorry about that. All right. Uh, I want to make sure I get to the first comment. Actually, I know what I need to do. This will take care of it. Copy. Paste. Paste, return. All right, here we go. All right, so there are three here. One, two, three. All right, so here we go. Yeah, I did get to the oldest one, I think. So, Reese, welcome to our Bible study. So again, the, the hymn is, um, The Lord Only Built One Church, and all denominations are an abomination. The Lord Only Built One Church. He did. Uh, Matthew 16, 18, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, briefly, um, that's singular. It's possessive, and it's a promise, two promises. He promised to do it. He did it, and then he promised it's not going anywhere, that it would always stand. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So we have that uh, the one church that Jesus purchased is still here. It's literally pre-denominational. It's before all religious division. And so uh, I had a Bible study based off the lyrics of that. Um, uh, if salvation is your goal, there's one thing you should know. The Lord only built his church. Division is condemned in 1 Corinthians. That's 1 Corinthians 1, 10 through 13. Unity and truth of the scriptures for the win. That's 1 Corinthians 1, 10 through 13. Uh, that's some of it. Um, Acts, the chap second chapter, tells us how to become Christians, how to obey the gospel, be added to the one church of the Bible. That's the second verse. I can't remember all of, the, all of it right now, but I'm just going to go ahead and get into the comments here. Uh, I made the video, the hymn video, and then I made a teaching video that breaks down the teaching of that hymn. And then uh, this individual is responding to the teaching video about the hymn. So, having said all that, Reese, welcome again. Welcome to our Bible study. I agree that all denominations are an abomination. Awesome. But that includes Christianity. What? I, like, I read that and I was like, what in the world? I mean, Christianity is simply following Christ. That's what it means. Um, I don't have, I need another item. I'm going to get it. I got to get a, um, a Bible. Uh, my Bible's on my phone. And although it's on my computer that I'm reading from, I'm just not fast with the computer. So I'm going to grab an iPad. I'll be right back.
Can't have a Bible study without my Bible. I always use a digital Bible. Just always have. Well, I say always. Um, since they became available, I've been using the digital Bible because it's the best. Um, easier to search and I say it's the best. It's the best for me. The paper Bible is completely sufficient, but I love, I love the uh, digital Bibles, man. I use U version. It just works awesome. So I wonder what scripture I just referenced there. Oh yeah, I don't know. Um, oh yeah, that includes Christianity. I know it's. Uh, I know it's uh, all denominations. Okay. So Christianity. Uh, all right, let's do it this way. Christianity is not a denomination because denominations are not following Christ. Christianity just means following Christ. And since Christ prayed that we would all be one, John 17, 20 through 23, not divided, and since he uh, had us read that in 1 Corinthians that all religious division is condemned, he wants us to be of one mind and now beseech you, brethren, 1 Corinthians 1, 10, in the name of, that's by the authority of, Jesus Christ. So he is the one that he, who authorized this to be taught. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. Denominations don't do that, but Christianity does. We speak what the Bible speaks. Um, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, no denominations among you. You all be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. The only way we can do that and please God is by turn to the Bible. So um, I wanted you to know... Um, uh, that's not the time for that. All right, the Holy Spirit showed me years ago that we are also not called to call ourselves Christians. Okay, so the way we can know, first of all, uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17 says, all scriptures breathed out by God, came from God. It's profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, that the man of God may be perfectly equipped, thoroughly, thoroughly furnished. We have all that we need through the Bible. So we know that the Holy Spirit doesn't talk to man directly. Um, because he told us he doesn't. He doesn't uh, give you something that he doesn't give everyone. Um, God who at sundry times, Hebrews 1, 1. God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. He used to do that. In different times, in different ways, he spoke to the fathers by the prophets. He used to, pro men used to prophesy. God used to speak to them directly. In different ways, in different times. But in these last days, hath in these last, last days, first, sorry, Hebrews 1, 1 and 2, hath in these last days now spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. So God is not speaking to us through prophets. God does not give us direct revelations anymore. Instead, he speaks to us through the completely sufficient word. Um, God does not, God is no respecter of persons. That means he doesn't show favoritism. Now, if he were to tell you, oh, we shouldn't be called Christians, well, he'd be showing favoritism because he didn't tell me that. Instead, what we see in the Bible is that in Joel 2, that we would be called by a new name. And in Acts 11, 26, we find that the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. So that's what I am. I'm a Christ follower and therefore a Christian. Uh, so uh, the Holy Spirit did not show you that you're not... The Holy Spirit did not show you anything apart from what he showed you in his completely sufficient word. And he certainly wouldn't show you things that are in conflict, in conflict rather, with his completely sufficient word. Jesus never gave his authority to a, his church... I'm sorry, it's Jesus never gave his church that identity either. Man did. All right, so let's let's just use the search term Christian. Christian. And see what comes up in the Bible. So what we've got is, wow, what just happened? See all. There we go. Uh, then, then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Uh, yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. I think there's three instances. Yeah, Acts eleven twenty six, And that's it. Uh, that's the new name prophesied in Joel 2. 
if any man suffer as a Christian, see, God breathed out the Bible. It was his decision to put the, the term Christian in the Bible three times. So yes, it's by the authority of Jesus Christ that we're called Christians. It just means Christ follower. And it's actually not being divided. I think you, you, you touched on that. We're going to just let me read it. Sorry. Um, Jesus never gave his church that identity. Either man did. So, so God having all authority, Jesus having all authority, put the term Christian into the Bible. So it, it's by that authority. Disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Christianity cannot be Christ's true church when it is divided into the very denominations you speak of. All right, let's address that. Christianity is Christ's true church. It's the church that belongs to Christ that he promised would always stand unless we are divided into denominations, right? That makes good sense, isn't it? It's following Christ to not be divided, to be united in the doctrine of Christ, 2 John 1, 9, to speak the same thing, 1 Corinthians 1, 10, and to be in denial. You point out something good. To be a part of a denomination is not following Christ. So it's not Christianity. You know what's not Christianity? Catholicism, Protestantism, Luther, Calvin, none of that stuff is following Christ. It's defying Christ to be divided into those little groups. It's against Christ. So they are not Christianity. But Jesus said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So his one church is still here. Also, it teaches false doctrines such as tithing. Christianity doesn't teach tithing. Denominations do, though and church attendance. Well, that would be uh, Hebrews 10, 25. Don't skip church. Not forsaking the assembling as it is with some people. Some people are skipping church, but that's condemned there. So uh, it's not church attendance. It's assembling with the saints. Um, it is assembling with the church. It's assembling to worship God. And yes, it is a sin to forsake the assembling of the church. If you do so, I mean, that's a whole other sermon, but uh, when you forsake the assembling, you don't stir up one another to love and good works, which is the verse previous, Hebrews 10, 24, I, th I think it is. If it's not, it's right there before it. Uh, you do not worship acceptably because we are commanded to gather together, Acts 27, and uh, remember the death of the Lord. Who are you going to lay by in store? So it's not tithing. It's instead, tithing was, was Jewish. Christians lay by in store as we have been prospered, that is... Lay by in store. I'm a whoa, that totally did not work. I'm dictating via via Siri. Wow, it just did a completely different language. It's never done that to me before. I got a newer iPad. Uh, 1 Corinthians 16 2. Uh, upon the first day of the week, commanding, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has pro prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Uh, that's a commandment we're commanded to, to lay by in store as we've been prospered. That's not tithing. That's a tenth is what a tithe means. And that was Old Testament. New Testament we give as we've been prospered. Um, so if you call yourself a Christian, you are also an heir. So if you don't call yourself a Christian, you are an heir. Actually, you're stripping the glory from Christ if you're not a Christian. So none of the apostles called themselves, called the church Christians. That label was not given by Christ. It was given by man. God put it in the Bible three times. God knew what he was doing. That's the new name from Joel 2. It's incorrect for a true believer to call themselves that when you keep Scripture in context. Now, so basically you've made the claim there that it's out of context, but it, you didn't show how. So I would need you to show how. Please watch this message and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. I clicked on it, I got a few minutes in, and it was just sadness. It was it was false doctrine. Um, it's been a couple of days, so I don't know all the error that was there, and I only got a few minutes into it, but I, I'm not going to consume false doctrine. Uh, I'll consume it enough to rebuke it, but I'm not going to. This person is a false teacher. It's either you or whoever you're learning from. Christ did not tell his church to go out into the world and tell everyone you are a Christian. He said, make disciples of all nations and preach the gospel. Right, Christ told them to teach, baptize, and teach. That's how they become disciples. It said the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. That's what we are when we abide in the doctrine of Christ. When we obey the gospel, we are made Christians. When we do what everybody did in the book of Acts, we become Christians. Nobody cares about your label that makes you feel special. Uh, I didn't make a label. I got it from the Bible, so it's God's label. He calls Christ followers Christians. Um... Christ said that the greatest is a servant, not a Christian. 
Amen, Christ said, the greatest is a servant. I try to serve every day. Like, well, if I talk about it, that takes away from it, doesn't it? So I'm not. So yeah, I try to be a servant every day, not a Christian. Well, the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. God put it in there for a reason. Um, when Paul was teaching King Agrippa, King Agrippa was almost persuaded to be a Christian. And Paul said, I wish that you were not only partway like me, but all the way like me. Paul was a Christian. So yes, Christian is a solid biblical term. It comes from the Bible, breathed out by God, completely sufficient, 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. Uh, the problem with so many Christians is that they pridefully and even ignorantly boast in the Christian label, not realizing that God also hates that. I would need book, chapter, verse that God hates that. Let's see. Suffer as a Christian. See, that's the verse that we already alluded to just a moment ago. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify, on, glorify God on this behalf. So actually, you know, you're you're saying that it's prideful and ignorant and you're actually um i'm suffering as a christian because of what you're saying against me at this point you're coming here to speak against me so um i'm glorifying god on on uh this behalf now that's uh first peter four sixteen. so it's not prideful to say i may i belong to christ and and just like that it's not prideful to say i'm a christian it's exactly the same thing i am of christ i'm a christian i'm a christ follower i'm a disciple i belong to christ i'm a christian i'm proud of that term i love it it means i belong to jesus amen somebody all right um i can't believe you would say god hates that term that is you you spoke strongly and not by the authority of scripture if it was by the authority of scripture you would have provided that scripture uh Christ himself said many, not some or a few, but many who come to him saying, Lord, Lord, did we not do mighty works in your name are going to be turned away. Correct. You say, why? Because people put more emphasis on their works than they do in Jesus' sacrifice. I would say that there are a lot of people that are going to be turned away. Most people are going to, no, let me, let me rephrase that. Jesus said that most people are going to be turned away. And I would agree that one of the reasons is that they're boasting in their works they're also claiming they did things in jesus name but they're not they're not doing it by his authority uh you're right now speaking against the term christian and you're not doing so by the authority of jesus christ uh, because people put more emphasis on the works nobody cares about you labeling yourself a christian it's a turn off to most oh we just got somewhere um, I didn't label myself a Christian. God did. I became a Christian. I was made a Christian when I met Jesus' terms for salvation. I believed the good news. I repented of sin. I changed my mind. And then I confessed his name before men. Yes, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then I went down into the water by his authority so that my sins would be washed away by his blood. At that point, Jesus made me a Christian, a Christ follower. That's beautiful. He added me to his church, Acts 2.47. That is beautiful. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. That's what I am, a disciple. I'm called a Christian, just like they were. No man-made divisive name. It's not man-made to call yourself Christian. Um, it's a turnoff to most unbelievers because it shows a lack of humility and boasts and pride. You didn't get that from the Bible, friend. It doesn't. And if you're worried about turning off unbelievers, look, Jesus came to bring a sword. He did. And telling people the truth about the one way of salvation and the one pre-denominational, before division. Pre, before division, denominations. The one church that belongs to Christ. Telling them that there's only one way of salvation. Oh, that turns them off too. But does that mean we should stop? No. Should we stop calling ourselves Christians because it hurts somebody's feelings? Well, of course not. I'm trying to point pe people to Jesus. Christ. The Christ the solution, the Messiah. I'm a Christ follower. I'm a Christian. If that hurts somebody's feelings, then I, I, I can't help them. I, I can just tell them what the disciples were called first in Antioch, Acts 11, 26. So I didn't label myself a Christian. Jesus made me a Christian. So that means God hates it as well. So you made that up. It's not from scripture. Be careful of doing things ignorantly without seeking the Holy Spirit's leading. So what you're talking about it's feelings, touchy-feely, oh, the little quiet, still voice in the back of your head. That's what you're talking about. And it's your feelings that you're talking about. Let's see what the Bible has to say about that. Man that walketh is the search term I'm going to use. Um, hmm. Oh, Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. 
I, it is not in man that walketh to direct his own steps. You don't have within you. What, what you're describing there, you think it's the Holy Spirit, it's your feelings. Here's the Holy Spirit right there. It's the Bible. It completely equips us. Either it completely equips us as, as God says, promises in 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17, or you're right and the Holy Spirit is telling you information miraculously. Of course, God said that back in the day, in different ways, in different manners, in different times, God spoke to us through the prophets, but now speaks to us through the Bible. Okay? So God did not lead you to say what you're saying here. Those are your feelings talking to you or somebody who's taught you incorrectly. Uh, the Holy Spirit is your teacher only if you follow the Bible, not yourself. That's what you're doing. You are going by your feelings. Humble yourself before God. That's what I do when I turn to the Bible for answers. And that's what you're not doing when you reject Bible terms like Christian. Humble yourself before God and do not be wise in your own eyes. That's literally what you're doing, dear friend. Oh, Trying to interpret scripture, interpret scripture with your limited human intellect. You got that right. I have limited human intellect. So what I do is I turn to the Bible, which does not have any limitations. It completely equips us. Uh, it causes error and hypocrisy. This is such a contradicting message till it's a shame. So it's not. It's just the doctrine of Christ. I've given book, chapter, verse for everything. I've provided you with no opinions or interpretations. So we got another uh, comment from the same one. Oh, third, third comment from that. When you start throwing your Christian label around, all you do is cause division. Man, I, I gonna have to, all right, first of all, that's not my label. I didn't make it up, okay? Acts eleven twenty six says the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. That means it's solid. God put it in there. He's running the show. He's right. Um, um bitter, or sweet. Okay. Isaiah 520 comes to mind here. You say it causes division to say I belong to Christ. That's ultimately what you're saying there. Woe unto them, Isaiah 520, that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. You have exchanged the truth for a lie, friend. That's exactly what you're doing here. Stop focusing on a label that Jesus did not give you. He did. He breathed out the Bible. So it's by the authority of Jesus Christ that I, that I call myself a Christian. That's what Jesus made me when I obeyed his gospel. Focus on being like him, speaking where the Bible is. How many times did Jesus say, thus saith? Let's see. As it is written. How many times did Jesus say, as it is written, as it is written, as it is written? That's being like Jesus. That's being like Jesus giving you book, chapter, verse rather than feelings, which are subjective and not authoritative and deceitful. Jeremiah. Nobody cares you're a Christian, including Jesus. That is so weird to say, man. Like, I gotta say, this is one of the weirdest comments I've gotten. Yes, we have to be Christians. Only Christians are going to heaven. Not Protestants or Methodists or Muslims or Buddhas or Jews or... No. Christians will go to heaven. Uh... It is not what he called you to be. Yeah, he called me to be a disciple, which is a Christian. So he did. I get tired of people reading one verse in the Bible out of context and then running with it and trying to make a whole other doctrine that suits their belief. Okay, I, I haven't. I've provided the three instances of, of being a Christian. And I'm suffering as Christian right now. And the disciples were called Christians first. God decided that. Plus, Joel 2, you're going to be called by a new name. Uh... This is the doctrine of Christ on this matter. Any other name is divisive and strips the glory from Jesus Christ. Man calling followers of Jesus Christians in Antioch is not grounds for you to take that label. Okay, so book, chapter, verse. Okay, so what I get from that is the Bible is not your authority. You do not believe that is God's authority revealed to us. That's what I get from that. If Jesus wanted that, then he would have given his church that name. Hmm. Romans 16, 16, the churches of Christ salute you, of Christ, Christian. He did. If any of you suffers as a Christian, people call followers of Jesus all kinds of names today. Does that mean you should accept it? Be careful not to be wise in your own eyes. Humble yourselves to the voice of the Holy Spirit. 
Okay, I'm not wise in my own eyes because I'm turning to the scriptures, looking for Bible answers. What does the Bible call disciples? The disciples were called Christians. Does that make it solid? That's the doctrine of Christ on the matter. Humble yourselves to the voice of the Holy Spirit as you going on your feelings. We love you. We don't want you to go on your feelings. We want you to do what the Bible says instead. All right, so that was those three on that. And then there was one more comment. Wow, on the other one. And that is, oh, maybe that was all of them. All right, no, I found the last one. This one is uh, pretty offensive. You should really humble yourself and cons humbling yourself is just saying what the Bible says rather than going on your feelings, which you think are the Holy Spirit. And consider the fact that your messages may actually have error in them. They could, and it's actually imperative that I turn to the scriptures to make sure that what I'm teaching is truth because teachers will be judged more harshly, James 3, 1, which applies to both of us. Um, you put your confidence in the praises of men? Where did you get that? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, this is why you are teaching hypocritical errors because you're not truly relying on the Holy Spirit, okay? You're not relying on the Holy Spirit when you speak against the Bible. That's how we know you're not relying on the Holy Spirit. Relying on the Holy Spirit is having a book, chapter, verse answer for all questions spiritual. That is relying on the Holy Spirit. Uh, we can know you're not because you're speaking against the term that is in the Bible, the new name, Joel 2, given to believers, disciples. They're called Christians. That's just the Bible answer. That's how we know that you're not being led by the Holy Spirit. Um, you should care less about encouragement from man. Did you know that God told us to encourage? I've got a song about that. Be an encourager, lift each other up. There can never be enough. Let's see. Stir each other up to love and good works. Um, oh, I've got a bunch on this. Um, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. That's uh, Ephesians 4.29. Yeah, we're, we're commanded to encourage each other. That, that stirs each other up to love and good works. That is, uh, I think that's Hebrews 10.24. I'm not sure, though. Let's see. Yeah. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. We are, let's compare that, actually. Compare. I think there's some good. Stimulate, stir up, provoke, stir up provoke. We are in, to encourage and build each other up. When somebody speaks the doctrine of Christ, I say, amen. Good job, brother. Keep standing on the truth of the word. And likewise, or conversely rather, we are to rebuke error. We're supposed to actually expose it. Ephesians 5, 11. No fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. We're supposed to call out. We're supposed to try the spirits, test them. But we don't test it by our feelings and claim it's the Holy Spirit. Instead, we test what somebody is teaching by the authority of the word. That's what we do here. That's the last thing you should care about. So you, you are claiming that I care about the approval of man rather than God. That's really ugly. Yeah, that's... It's wrong. It's, it's ugly. All I care about is the doctrine of Christ and repeating it because I fear God and keep his commandments. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. I fear God. I want to go to heaven. I fear the uh, stricter judgment that I will receive as a teacher, James 3, 1. So I make sure that what I teach is just book, chapter, verse. What does the Bible say? I'm going to teach that. And that's what's been done here. Um, they care nothing about what man thinks one way or another because it is not your message. It is God's. When a messenger is truly sent forth by God, well, how do we know? Well, we compare what they're saying to the Bible. We don't go what they on what they think are is the Holy Spirit, which is actually their feelings. We go about by book, chapter, verse. What does the Bible say? Every time. I love you, Reese 1978. I am uh, discouraged by your comments, and I would encourage you to compare what I said. Go back through that message that you're speaking against. And look at all those scriptures and see if what I'm saying is true. Yeah, that's what the Berean Jews were called more noble for doing, Acts 17, 11. I love you. I'm discouraged by you. And um, 
I want you to be right with God. God calls disciples Christians in his completely sufficient God-breathed word. That's the authority of Christ that I submit when I call myself a Christian, a Christ follower, a believer in Jesus Christ. I belong to Christ. 2 John 1, 9 to close. He that abides not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. That is how I am a Christian. I abide in the doctrine of Christ, and I urge you to do the same. Don't trample Jesus' name. Instead, own it. Wear it. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch, Acts eleven twenty six. So am I. So are actual Christ followers, actual disciples. We are Christians. I love you. We'll see you next time.